don't look now, the Atlanta Falcons are now 4-2 after a 38-20 victory on the road. They have won three straight games after starting the season 1-2, and, and after an offseason that consisted of so much talk and so much criticism, with them of course signing Kirk Cousins to a long-term deal and then drafting a rookie QB and Michael Penix Jr., I don't think anyone saw this team being one of the early season surprises. But here we are, and I want to talk all about it. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. We are on the road to 40,000 subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can get there super fast. Alright, so before we even get into anything, let's recap the recent win over the Carolina Panthers. Andy Ogle, Tyler Algier punched in the dagger to put Atlanta up by 15, and they would add one more field goal to the total to make the final score 38-20 to 20 Falcons. Starting off with Kirk Cousins, the veteran QB had a solid outing completing 19 of 30 passes for 225 yards and a touchdown. While these numbers might seem modest compared to his record-breaking 509-yard performance against the Buccaneers last week, his efficiency and leadership was crucial in guiding the Falcons to this victory. But of course the real stars of the show were the Falcons running backs. B. John Robinson and Tyler Algier put on a clinic combining for an impressive 200 yards. Robinson racked up 95 yards on 15 carries, averaging a stellar 6.3 yards per attempt, and punched in two touchdowns, while Algier was equally impressive, gaining 105. This dynamic duo showcased the perfect blend of power and speed, really keeping the Panthers' defense off balance throughout the game. Their performance wasn't just about the numbers, though. It was about the way they elevated the entire offense. The threat of the run opened up passing lanes for Cousins and kept the defense guessing. And speaking of the passing game, Drake London continued to be a reliable target for Cousins. The young receiver hauled in a 3-yard touchdown pass, demonstrating his ability to be effective in the red zone. And then Kyle Pitts had a big game with 70 yards as well. And then the Falcons offensive line deserves a ton of credit for this win. They dominated the trenches, creating massive holes for the running backs and providing solid protection for Cousins. The line's performance allowed the Falcons to control the tempo of the game and wear down the Panthers defense over time. And then, let's talk about and address the elephant in the room that lingered all offseason with this team, the Michael Penix Jr. draft pick. When the Falcons selected Penix with the 8th overall pick, it raised eyebrows across the league. Many questioned the decision, especially after the team had just signed Kirk Cousins to a massive contract. However, this game showed why they made a good decision, because Penix truly is learning from the right guy, and all I have to do is look at the Green Bay Packers and Jordan Love to see why the Falcons felt like taking him off the board was the right decision. Anyways, switching gears, defensively, the Falcons had their ups and downs. They allowed Andy Dalton to throw for 221 yards and two touchdowns, however, the defense came up big when it mattered most. AJ Terrell and Clark Phillips each snagged crucial interceptions in the fourth quarter, effectively sealing the win for Atlanta. But one area of concern for the Falcons defense is their pass rush. They failed to record a sack in this game, continuing a trend of struggling to pressure opposing quarterbacks. This is something the coaching staff will need to address as the season progresses, especially against the best teams in the NFC. But the Falcons' ability to put up 38 points is a huge confidence booster for this team. It shows that they can win in multiple ways, whether it's through the air like last week or on the ground like this week. This versatility will make them a tough matchup for any opponent and will keep defenses on their heels. Nobody expected the Falcons to start the season 4-2, but here they are, sitting atop the NFC South. The key to sustaining this success will of course be consistency. They've shown they can win both close games and blow teams out. But can they do it week in and week out? That is the question we are all waiting to see. One factor that could help the Falcons maintain their momentum is their balanced offensive attack. With Cousins' arm, Robinson, and Algiers' legs, and a solid receiving core led by London and Kyle Pitts at tight end, defenses can't key in on just one aspect of the offense. Zach Robinson definitely deserves credit for his game planning. He's shown the ability to adapt to what defenses are giving them, whether that means airing it out or pounding the rock. Anyways, looking ahead, the Falcons have a tough test next week against the Seattle Seahawks. While Seattle has lost three straight games, they still boast an offense full of talent led by Geno Smith, Kenneth Walker, and DK Metcalf. This will be a great opportunity for the Falcons to prove they're for real, because I mean, there's just something about being 5-2 that really stands out no matter who a team has played. One player I'm going to keep my eye on moving forward is Kyle Pitts. The talented tight end hasn't put up huge numbers this season, but his presence on the field opens up opportunities for his teammates. So don't be surprised if he has a huge breakout game soon. 
I mean, 70 yards was solid, but I'm talking like above 100 yards with a few touchdowns. In terms of special teams, Young Way Q has been reliable as ever, and the return game, led by Avery Williams, has provided solid field position throughout the season. Raheem Morris has done an excellent job managing this team, he's fostered a winning culture, and has his players believing they can compete with anyone in this league. Here's what some of the key players on this team had to say in their recent interviews. It's uh, great to be in the sunshine and working and, um, you know, just put together a good day of work. Now i got to go watch the tape and uh, have some good conversations learning from that. But, um, uh, you know, just kind of turn the page now for the next challenge and uh, trying to stack another strong outing and, and see where it leads us. But uh, I can take any questions you guys got. Yeah, man. Um, they have a very talented team, a lot of shifts and motions. A lot of skill at every level, and um, you know we got to be ready to be, be prepared for them. Um, they have been on a you know tough um, string of games, but all we can do is focus on where we're at, what we're trying to accomplish, and uh, you know trying to get the next dub. So um, we're doing what we got to do. He's like very you know serious when he's doing. I'm like, can, can we joke around just a little bit? But uh, but no, he's he continues to send those. We we have great feedback uh, you know after games with those, but nothing that that kind of hits off the top of the head. Are they very well formulated thoughts? Like he has a bullet list that he needs to get across to you in this voice memo, or is it? Oh wait, never mind. I was thinking about this. Is it kind of? No, it's definitely. You can tell he's got you know he's got his notepad that he that he writes all of his notes and he writes the plays as small as he possibly can in there, and then. I can tell he's reading down all of his thoughts, and it really goes kind of in game order uh, with a lot of his thoughts. So it's very easy to follow, as you guys know. Kirk is a as process guy as it comes, which uh, you know, which what makes makes him a great player. That's really all I got for this one. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point, and if you enjoyed it and haven't yet, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly does mean the world. And also, let me know what you would like to see next. And until then, I will see you all later.